What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another awesome video from Byerly Studios. <laughs> in this video, I am sculpting a Spider-Man breakaway tumbler in the same format that I did the ghost tumbler as well as the most recent zombie tumbler. I am going to make a zombie uh, tutorial here soon, just like this one, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to begin this process by just blocking in the overall shape of the face, kind of where the, the nose would be. This is Spider-Man after all, so he'll have that webbing across the mask of his face. Uh, so you don't have to you know, uh, sculpt any of the facial features or anything like that. Uh, I just want to get the general shape. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of sculpt in where I want his eyes to be. And then I do believe that I'll probably come in with some uh, holographic vinyl to make that a mirrored effect when I get done. Try to get the other eye the same concept. Almost kind of aligned up. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because he is after all breaking through a wall. You can kind of see how I defined the nose there. I'm going to build out that a little bit around the, uh, the bottom of the chin there before I begin uh, the next step. Alright, so after blocking in the chin, the next step is to suffocate, I mean to wrap the clay uh, in some saran wrap. And this allows me to get a very smooth surface without any fingerprints whatsoever. Um, it's just a really quick process. Uh, you can also use this process to make kind of a fabric textured look. Um, and it just gives a nice ripple. I'm using it just to smooth out the surface. Um, and this would also kind of make it flow the way that the fabric over the face would naturally flow. Because we're just supposed to see the impression of the nose and the mouth, not per se any, any d distinguishing features. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and scrape in those eyes one more time just so I can have those as a reference as I move forward with the webbing of the face. Looks good. All right, so the next step is to apply a little bit of texture to that uh, that would-be fabric of the face. Uh, and this will go behind the netting. This is actually a fine mesh net bag that I had got from the grocery store and I'm recycling. I believe uh, garlic cloves came in this. So it's just a perfect size and proportion uh, for the fabric of the face. Now some of that might get washed out when I do the acrylic painting. However, it's just a really cool effect and you can barely see that in the, in the camera there just because the clay is so white. Uh, but hopefully some of that, uh, that wash paint that I use will get uh, settled into those grooves and it will kind of leave a nice textured effect. Alright, so now begins the long process of applying the webs to the face mask. Uh, I, in hindsight, I should have used my clay extruder for this. Instead, I rolled all of these pieces of clay out by hand. It's okay to do it this way, but I had a clay extruder and I should have used it. So I'm just going to work my way all the way around the mask, kind of laying those so that it, it looks like as if the uh, face has more shape than it does. Uh, the, the, of course, the shape is a little bit flat, but we're adding a little dimension by laying them in the right way. I'll kind of press those into the clay a little bit. I don't want them to be too projected away. And then we're going to start laying in the actual webs uh, of, of the webbing there. And then what I'll do is I will come back in stages and I will blend that into the main webbing that I put on originally. And this will happen all the way around the face. So sit back, watch this process. This is in an extreme time lapse. So enjoy the process.
All right, so next stage here is I'm going to go ahead and cut a sliver of clay. Uh, this is a very large piece. I end up slicing this down quite a bit. However, it gives me the overall definition of the eye. I want the eye to have a small bracket around it. And then I'll come in later and add some more clay to build up the interior of the eye so it looks more of like a concave oval shape. So I'm just going to kind of smooth this in, um, and then it also allows me to dart, that'll be a dart bracket, whereas the inside of the eye will be a holographic or a bright color, maybe like a holographic gold. Alright, so this is coming along quite nicely, just kind of smoothing out some of those edges uh, and getting an overall definition of where I want the, the brick to be laid out. So he is breaking through a brick wall, so I'm going to go ahead and start building up that level beside the face. And I'm kind of cutting out the mortar joints or where I want those mortar joints to be. And those will of course be a different texture as well as a different color. So when I come in with the acrylic paints, it'll really, really bring it to life. It looks kind of flat until that's done, so during the acrylic process, it'll really, really uh, bring those forward. So I'm just going to slowly build in that groove, deciding how I really want those to lay. That's the great thing about polymer clay, is nothing is really set in stone until you put it in, in the oven to bake it. You can come back over and over and over again for months at a time to change features and add things in. And you can let it just sit on your desk until you're ready to make the changes that you want, get it how you like it, and then bake it and then make it permanent. Alright, so I'm using the tried and true way of making texture here. Um, tin foil. You can ball up tin foil in different shapes and ways and, and uh, you can uh, create different uh, overall texture stipple effects and things like that. So I'm just rolling up a ball, a ball of clay uh, in different sizes and I'm just going to apply a stipple te uh, texture to the brick and to the mortar. Uh, I'll probably define that a little bit more as I add paint to that and then define the colors maybe with uh, some layers of glitter or some grit and grime, maybe some sand. Uh, that depends on how I like the build up when I start painting it. So I'm also trying to think about where the mortar joints are while I'm working on this process. The very top lip of the tumbler, I want that to be a red brick, which means just below it there will be a mortar joint and then the next brick down. That top part has to be a brick, otherwise his face will not be blocked, like bracketed in by bricks in the right way. So I'm just going to go ahead and build up this clay along the right hand side over here. And then once I get to the bottom, then I can work it around the, the bottom chin. So I'm just using a, a flat uh, flat blade there to uh, get a right angle at the corners of the bricks there. Uh, and then after I add texture, it kind of rounds them over a little bit, but it allows me to get that right angle that I need just to give it the definition of bricks um, so that the mortar joint is deeper than the overall outside of the brick. So I'm just going to define that lower brick right there, and that's supposed to be a broken brick. So when I come in to paint that, I'll make those cracks larger and just different variations of red in color texture to make it look like it's actually broken. It's all about the illusion of what it would be after the acrylics are applied. More texture with the tried and true tin foil. So I'm scraping off some of that clay, 
Uh, and what that will do is the brick will kind of follow the edge of the, the tumbler around. But when you're looking at the Spider-Man, the parts around his actual face will be raised up slightly. So that it gives you an illusion that the brick is somewhat flat, but it's actually not, right? So it's just going to be just an overall illusion. Uh, the very last step I do before I put it in the oven is I actually build up the edges of those bricks along his face even more and I roll them in slightly so they're kind of covering the webbing. So if you decide to do a project from beginning to end where it's wrapping all the way around, of course that clay is still, you know, not baked and it's, it's raw clay. So when you lay it down, it takes away your features. So at that some point during the process, you just have to hold, hold the project in your hand and kind of lean it over to get what you need, which means you're kind of working with one hand, but at the same time, you're working with tools anyway, so you're usually working with one hand anyways. I'm also going to define some cracks and I'll define these a little bit over time throughout the process, widen them out uh, just to, uh, when I shade them, it can give some definition to the overall brick and how he's breaking through. So on the back side, I don't want it to be 100% uh, sculpted all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some spots of brick and mortar. Uh, and now let the paint, when I paint the, the raw metal, do the talking for the tumbler. So it'll, it'll kind of feel uniform all the way around, but there will only be textures at some places on the back of the tumbler just to give it some, some cool effect. So I'll slowly work these little spots of uh, brick and mortar all the way down. You can kind of see here where the, the brick is kind of patchy around the back of the tumbler. It just gives it some variation. It's going to be kind of cool to hold it, whereas some places will be 3D, some places won't. It kind of just breaks up just the overall depth and weight of the cup a little bit. So 
So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of meat to those eyes, as I said earlier. Uh, and this is when I'm coming back to do that. Uh, I built up the layers on the eyes a little bit so I get that concave, uh, you know, oval shape. And here I am actually applying a web. I know this is a little bit thicker than it probably would be, but, set, but hey, maybe Spider-Man's shooting a really thick web for some reason. Maybe he needs that strength to get through this brick wall, pull himself through, or, or maybe he's just trying to get away from something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and build up the material as it goes down and then it swoops up and around and then I'll just do like a a split uh, clay effect to give a attachment to the brick wall I'm hoping when I come back with my paints uh, I could do maybe like a titanium uh, wash over maybe a cream color uh, just to give it that definition and it's just gonna make it look kind of fun and just different that way there is something on the back of the tumbler and it's just not all just brick And then once I get that out, I'm just going to add some striations, almost like hairs to it, uh, like a hair texture. And I'll use a needle tool to get that effect as well. Uh, and I'm just giving it texture so that my washes uh, have something to settle down into. Uh, so that I can just give it a lot of texture uh, paint itself. Alright, so that pretty much wraps this project up on the clay work, and of course I'll make a part two for all of the uh, the detailed acrylic work. I appreciate you all coming in to watch this video. If you were finding this on TikTok, I appreciate you coming over to the YouTube page and checking it out. Please subscribe. I've got awesome projects coming out uh, on down the line. Have a good one, guys.